What is the difference between a skill-based test and a content-based test? Team, this is Chris Abraham from Grow Academy, and in this video, we're gonna talk about the difference between skill-based and content-based exams and how this relates to the Communication Literacy MTEL. Team, let's take a look right now. Let's go. Let's talk about skill-based testing, okay? This test itself. Uh, you're not doing a regular content-based test. Who's done the MTELs where you've done like, let's say, who's done the 178, the new 178, or maybe the old 03 or the 278? Who's done those exams? The MTEL 03 or the new ones, the 178 or the 278? Or maybe you've done the foundations of reading exam or the reading specialist exam or like the ESL exam or that maybe the SEI exam. Who's done these or, or any of the math exams. So every other MTEL that you take is going to be a content based test, meaning you're going to learn knowledge on every other exam except for this one. Every other test, whether it's the the 178 or the 278 or the 54 or the 190, it'll be content, which will mean you can start by knowing nothing. You can go to a class and learn a lot of stuff and it's progressive, right? It, you learn as you go. But the thing is, is that your test is not a content-based exam. It's one of the only tests that is not content-based, meaning it's skill-based. And, and a skill-based test means that we are going to be working on uh, reading and writing skills, okay? Uh, and it's going to, you're going to have to apply these skills to a variety of different uh, passages and, and, and writing activities. So this is, this is not going to, so this is going to be something where we're going to work on skills. And here's the skill, here's the thing with skills. You can get better at skills by practicing them, not studying them, practicing them. Does that make sense? A skill is something that you can improve on by practicing. The more you do, the better you get. Like Carly here, she has to she has to run, she has to aim, she has to kick, she has to do all these skills under tremendous pressure. Is that right? Because she's doing that. This is these are the skills that she needs. This is who's heard of Carly Lloyd? Sorry for jumping the gun there. Who's heard of Carly Lloyd? She's played in seven World Cups. That's amazing, right? Isn't that awesome? It's like the Michael Jordan here. A very She's got a lot of skill. So she's working on running, aiming, and kicking, and she has to practice this all under pressure, right? And, and she probably wakes up. Would you, would you say she wakes up early to practice, stays up late, right? Works really hard at it. Well, on your exam, you're going to have to work on skills too. Like maybe for your test, you're going to have to, maybe who feels like they're going to have to work on, who has ever had issues on, on pacing? Anyone ever have issues on pacing? It's the pacing, the pace. Or maybe you have issues on the multiple choice or, or the essays. Okay, so here's the thing. You, you can get better at pacing the multiple choice and the open response, but you're going to need to practice them. Okay. So we're not, if there's nothing I can teach you, uh, that's going to, there's no knowledge that you can study, no vocab outside of the found outside of the reading, the writing terms. Like if you didn't know what subject verb agreement is, you could study that. But outside of that, there's a whole bunch of skills that you're going to have to work on. Just like Carly has to work on her running, aiming, kicking. So I want you to start to think about this test as a skills-based test. And as you go through the case studies, try and identify skills. Uh, like, are you able to identify the main idea of a passage? Or recognize sequence of ideas? How about this one right here? Have you ever taken a, a, a test like this and asked to summarize the events? Who's ever had uh, inferential or critical reasoning skills like identify the author's purpose or make an inference or compare a fact versus an opinion? So team, look, we've just circled types of questions 
And each one of these questions has skills that you can use to, to get to the answer. There are ways of finding main idea. There's ways of identifying author's purpose. So what you need to do is start to be aware of these different types of questions and what are the strategies and things you can do to, to get more of these right. So that's what this class is meant to try and do. It's to try and uh, help identify those skills that you need to work on and then you get to, you get to practice it, right? So wherever you are with this stuff, everyone can get a little bit better, okay? If we practice, it's all about practicing. Team, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something, I want you to give it a big thumbs up and share it with a friend. And if you need help on these exams, you should check out Go Academy's teacher workshops. This is where we go through the exams and help teachers through the... Team, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I want you to give it a big thumbs up and share it with a friend. All right, team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Everyone have a great day. Take care, team. Bye, guys. And you'll see a list of all the classes that are coming up. All right, team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Everyone have a great day. Take care, team. Bye-bye.